Hello everyone. There are many clinical situations where as dental practitioners we have to recommend antibiotics for our patients. But there are many situations where the patients where, to whom we are recommending the antibiotic may be having some form of systemic diseases like a liver disease, a renal disease or many such illness. In those situations, the antibiotics that we are prescribing for these patients can be used safely or not. This is a big question in many dental practitioners' mind. Let it be an experienced dental practitioner or a budding dentist. In this video, I am going to give some insights into some of the antibiotics which could be safely used and some of the antibiotics which must be avoided in those clinical situations. So, welcome to Smart Dentistry YouTube channel. I am Dr. Benin. Let's go into the video. In this presentation, I am going to cover about the liver diseases, the cardiac diseases, diabetes mellitus, in case of pregnancy and uh, lactating mothers, then in case of uh, epilepsy, respiratory diseases, and in case of immune compromised individuals, in those individuals with penicillin allergy, what alternative antibiotics could be used and then finally those individuals who are suffering from renal diseases. Okay, first let's see about the liver diseases. Amoxicillin and clindamycin can be used safely in those who are having liver diseases, not an end-stage disease. If there is an end-stage disease, uh, then it is uh, often recommended that we must consult with a physician but with an initial disease stages then amoxicillin and clindamycin can be used safely. Acetromycin must be used cautiously and metronidazole, amoxicillin with clavulanic acid, augmentin and erythromycin must be used, uh, must be avoided. Why? Because these drugs are primarily metabolized in liver. So it is always the drug of choice for those who are having hepatic diseases or the amoxicillin and clindamycin. Those who are having cardiac diseases, the drug of choice again remains amoxicillin and clindamycin. Although the uh, in case of cardiac diseases, there will be no direct drug interactions between the cardiac disease and the antibiotic. But the medications which are used for the cardiac disease may interact with the antibiotic. So it is better to, uh, better to use with caution of the cephalexin, which is a cephalosporin, and the drugs like acetromycin, erythromycin, and fluoroquinolone, that is ciprofloxacin, for example, must be avoided. For those who are having diabetes mellitus, uh, again, there are many drugs which can be used like amoxicillin, amoxicillin with clavulanic acid, clindamycin, acetromycin can be used and uh, ciprofloxacin must be used cautiously. Those uh, individuals who are pregnant, amoxicillin, cephalexin and clindamycin can be used safely and metronidazole and acetromycin must be used cautiously. Metronidazole can be considered as one of the drug uh, which, which is uh, often used frequently in dental practice. So metronidazole must be preferably avoided or used cautiously in case of pregnancy. And tetracyclines and fluoroquinolones, for example, ciprofloxacin, preferably must be avoided in case of pregnancy. Those who are breastfeeding or in case of lactating mothers, we can easily go, uh, prescribe amoxicillin, cephalexin and clindamycin and used with caution drugs includes fluoroquinolones, acetromycin and metronidazole. Metronidazole can cause a metallic taste in the milk. So the infant may not like drinking the Milk. So, in order to avoid that, it is better to avoid metronidazole and tetracycline must be avoided as it can cause a permanent staining of the teeth. In case of epilepsy, again, there is no direct interaction between the epileptic disease 
seizures and also the antibiotics but but the drugs which are used for treating epilepsy may interact with the antibiotic so it is better to use amoxicillin uh, cefalexin and clindamycin and the drugs that must be used cautiously include clarithromycin and metronidazole again look metronidazole must be used cautiously and it is better to avoid ciprofloxacin in those having respiratory diseases like maybe asthma, maybe COPD or any other respiratory illness, it, we can use, we can prescribe amoxicillin, cephalexin and clindamycin. But azithromycin must be used cautiously and erythromycin must be avoided. In those individuals who must have undergone, who might have undergone a, a radiation chemotherapy radiation therapy or chemotherapy after uh, uh, carcinoma or maybe those who have undergone an organ transplantation or those who are having autoimmune diseases again amoxicillin cephalexin and clindamycin can be used safely and ciprofloxacin must be used cautiously and azithromycin and metronidazole must be avoided those individuals who are allergic to penicillin it is always better to use Clindamycin. The alternative drugs include azithromycin and metronidazole. And cephalaxin, which is a cephalosporin, must be used with caution because 10 percentage of the individuals who are allergic to amoxicillin will be allergic to cephalosporins also. So it has to be used with caution. And at any cost, amoxicillin and amoxicillin with Clavulanic acid must be avoided because they are allergic to penicillin. And finally, those who are having renal diseases, we can use clindamycin and azithromycin. So far, we have seen that amoxicillin remains as a drug of choice for most of the systemic illnesses, but not for kidney diseases. It has to be used with amoxicillin, can be used with caution or at a low dose or under the supervision of a physician. Amoxicillin, amoxicillin with clavulanic acid, metronidazole, ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin, all these antibiotics must be used with caution and it is better to avoid cephalosporins. I have made a table. This will be helpful for all uh, practitioners so that it, it summarizes all the uh, antibiotics and the systemic conditions and the, the drugs which can, which are indicated which have to be used with caution and the drugs which have to be avoided so i hope that this is helpful and again i made this video uh, after considering uh, the physician's opinion uh, from the drug uh, from the textbooks and my clinical experience for this many years again those individuals who are having severe illness, it is always better to consult a physician before making our own disease, uh, before uh, our own decisions about prescribing the antibiotics. So I hope this video will be helpful for everyone. So I will upload another video next week. Until then, have a nice day. Thank you for watching till the end.